Ladies and gentlemen, I am said Alpha. Previously, I had covered the plagiarism antics of confirmed plagiarist Philip Mewson, and more recently, actually as recent as yesterday, I had covered the known plagiarism of confirmed plagiarist Mr. Dalek JD. And throughout all of those, I have seen a very common trend amongst a lot of fans of both of these individuals, that plagiarism is not a crime, so get over it. And for a long time, I, like many other people, never questioned the assertion that plagiarism is a crime of ethics more than it is an actual legal issue. However, yesterday something clicked in my brain thanks to responding to commenters on YouTube and on Twitter, and I decided to actually spend a few seconds looking up and reading some documentation. And as it turns out, plagiarism in many instances, such as those actions by confirmed plagiarists Philip Mewson and Mr. Dalek JD, are, in fact, copyright infringement, at least in my non lawyery interpretation. So I thought it would take some some time to explain why for two very specific reasons. The first is that mimeograph machine YouTube channels such as these should be aware that their actions could carry with them potential legal consequences, and it would behoove such people to remedy their behavior in order to conform to copyright law and save themselves from any potential legal issues or risks of their channels being terminated. The second reason is for other creators, such as the Call of Duty Zombies forum poster Panaz and Suggestive Gaming, to understand that what was done to them was a violation of their copyright and they would and do have legal options available to them. Of course, standard caveat that I am not an attorney in this video does not constitute legal advice, merely the ramblings and musings from a mook with a mic who doesn't enjoy the concept of gaming YouTubers stealing content from others. And these situations actually present a nice range of aspects, from direct copyright infringement of a YouTube video, copyright infringement of numerous publications such as what confirmed plagiarist Philip Mewson did, and even a case of copyright infringement of a derivative work. And we even have a nice toss-in with the Redditors that confirmed plagiarist Mr. Dalek JD stole their idea and left them uncredited. Actually, let's start with that one because that one is the easiest. His action there was, as I said in my previous video, not plagiarism, nor could it be considered copyright infringement. The reason for that is that you can copyright expression, but you cannot copyright an idea. Before this, let me show you what AuthorsAlliance.org had to say in terms of plagiarism. Sometimes, plagiarism also rises to the level of copyright infringement, but not always. For example, authors may freely use materials in the public domain without concern for copyright liability, and some unauthorized uses of copyrighted material are permitted under exceptions to copyright like fair use. While these uses are not copyright infringement, they may still be plagiarism if the work is used in a manner that presents the work or ideas as the user's own. Likewise, usurping the ideas of another creator without properly crediting the source of the idea is not copyright infringement. Copyright protects expression, not ideas, but maybe plagiarism. Which, alright. I'll revise my statement over the situation with the two Reddit users to say that, while confirmed plagiarist Mr. Dalek JD plagiarized their idea, he did not violate their copyright. Also, I should clarify because I know there will be more than a few people either failing to comprehend or who are simply being disingenuous in regards to what public domain is. Simply having a work visible to the public is not public domain. Now let's give a quick definition of that from Stanford University so people will grasp what that even means. The term public domain refers to creative materials that are not protected by intellectual property laws such as copyright, trademark, or patent laws. The public owns these works, not an individual author or artist. Anyone can use a public domain work without obtaining permission, but no one can ever own it. And now that we're clear on that, where was I? Ah yes, so you can copyright an expression, not an idea. Next, let's look at copyright in terms of plagiarizing works. After all, we do have to have a basis to work from here. Now, in terms of this, let's go over the Legal Dictionary website where they state, Plagiarism is theft of another person's writing or idea. Generally, it occurs when someone steals expressions from another author's composition and makes them appear to be his own work. Plagiarism is not a legal term, however, it is often used in lawsuits. Courts recognize acts of plagiarism as violations of copyright law, specifically as the theft of another person's intellectual property. Because copyright law allows a variety of creative works to be registered as the property of their owners, lawsuits alleging plagiarism can be based on the appropriation of any form of writing, music, and visual images. Okay, so, plagiarism can be copyright infringement, but then there's the question, how does what either of these two plagiarists did fall under that realm? Well, the answer is quite simple. The concept is that the infringing party is stealing the words or works from another creator and passing them off as their own. However, there are a couple of factors that must be determined. The first, did the infringing party have access to the work they were plagiarizing? In all cases here, yes. 
Absolutely. That isn't even a question. Publicly visible YouTube videos, forum posts, and website publications that are still live and visible to this day. The second consideration would be a substantial similarity, and I feel that word-for-word -word rips would certainly qualify as a substantial similarity, as well as the content being of the same purpose and intent. For example, a university student copies a paragraph from a novel and uses it in a report, without proper citation or accrediting. That would be plagiarism, but as the purpose and intent of the novel would be very different from a report, it would likely not be considered to be copyright infringement. Now, with the review plagiarism of Philip Mewson, the intent is very much the same as the original work. The same with Mr. Dalek JD and his plagiarism. The intent of the videos matched and mirrored the intent of the original works and as such would likely constitute copyright infringement. However, this is a bit of a subjective process and a full determination on that, just like with fair use, would have to be left up to a judge. In addition, there would then arise the question of fair use. And then also, there is the question of proper attribution, which was not done in any of these instances and I'll discuss quotes and proper attribution in a moment. Philip Mewson was highly prolific in this type of plagiarism as he directly stole from countless publications and used them as scripts for his own videos. Mr. Dalek JD did the exact same thing. And you don't need to take my word for it, you can hear it straight from the plagiarizing horse's mouth. Is I used his scripts and very similar visuals in my video when explaining Call of Duty World at War, Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 3. These explanations were copied word for word from his video and whilst I did credit him in the description, this is nowhere near enough to justify the blatant plagiarism. So yes, he did, by his own admission, steal Suggestive Gaming's script and passed it off as his own. And by doing so, he infringed on Suggestive Gaming's copyright. But then, what about fair use? And I see many people use the same old tired adage of, but it's transformative. The thing of it is, and this is something that a lot of people either fail to or refuse to understand, is that the work being transformative is rarely enough to qualify as a claim of fair use. That then falls to the four factors, which have been discussed at great length on numerous videos on my channel. And in this instance, in my non lawyery interpretation, what confirmed plagiarist Mr. Dalek JD and confirmed plagiarist Philip Mewson did would not qualify for fair use. You must also consider the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality taken, and the effect on the potential market, and all of these tie together. And these might not even qualify as transformative, mind you. Stanford University lists the following two questions for the transformative factor. Has the material you have taken from the original work been transformed by adding new expression or meaning? And was value added to the original by creating new information, new aesthetics, new insights, and understandings? As in all of these cases, with the exception of the Reddit users, they were word-for-word -word rips, so no additional expression or meaning was added as the context behind both were also identical. And in terms of value being added? Uh, potentially. But that would be a bit of a stretch since Mr. Darlick JD even admitted to copying the visual and editing style. Now, in terms of confirmed plagiarist Philip Mewson, yeah, I think we could say that his use of a visual medium would create a value add over the written publications that he plagiarized from. And in terms of the nature of the copyrighted work, well, this is a consideration as to whether or not these are published or unpublished works. And in all instances, they are published works. And this is a consideration because the author has right of first publication if it is an unpublished work. Next, we have the amount and substantiality. A less is more is the general rule of thumb here, except with this, you must also consider whether you are taking the heart of the work, which in terms of Mr. Dalek JD's wholesale ripoff of Pinaz's forum post, there is no chance for those four videos to fall under fair use. In terms of Suggestive Gaming's video, Mr. Dalek JD did, in essence, steal the heart of the work, and his theft of the script was fairly substantial in nature. Now, in this, he would likely fail. For Philip Mewson, very much the same. They were wholesale rips with only minor rewording at times and most definitely stole the heart of the original work, which was a review or a critique. And the effect of the use on the potential market is also a factor. And in this factor, both of these individuals would fail and fail hard as they are direct market replacement for the original. So no, neither of these people would be able to legally claim a protection of fair use in my opinion. Okay, but what about quotes? Because I still, even as I've been prepping for this video, have had some confirmed plagiarist Mr. Dalek JD's trolly little fanboys trying to claim that I'm saying that using quotes is copyright infringement. And in this, they would be wrong. Now look what I have done so far within this video. When I'm quoting someone, such as Stanford University or even Mr. Dalek JD himself, with my use of a clip from his apology video. 
I make it very clear and in no uncertain terms that these are the words of another. I show them on screen, I tell you who it is from, there is no possibility of confusion there and no reasonable or sane person would ever be able to assume that I am claiming those words came from me. A citation, such as a link below the fold in the description, is not enough. Mr. Dalek JD did this with his theft of suggestive gaming script, but by doing so, he still obfuscated which portions of the video were not his, and within the video itself, there was no indication whatsoever that he was citing an external source or creator. This leaves the viewer with the impression that these are his words, not someone else's. There must be a clear and distinct delineation point so the viewer is aware of where those words originated and what words originated from that other source. And in terms of the Panaz ripoff, Mr. Dalek JD almost got it right with the Yellowstone segment of the first video where he stated that he was reading from a blog, which actually wasn't accurate, but whatever. That still, at least, left the viewer with the impression that the Yellowstone segment was not his own words. Now, granted, he never cited where he was reading from for what, in my opinion, were obvious reasons, because he wanted to take the entire forum post and turn it into a four-part video series. However, with the Panaz post in those four videos, I'm sure a few people would claim, but all Panaz was doing was quoting a bunch of web sources like Wikipedia. Which is true. However, what Panaz was doing was creating a compendium of information for the purposes of theory crafting. He did cite all the sources he was using himself, but the overall forum post would be considered a derivative work. Which a derivative work is copyright infringement itself, mind you, but derivative works also carry their own copyright. I know, confusing. Now here's the thing with derivative works such as Panaz's forum post, or Twitch streams, or Let's Plays. They exist at the sufferance of the original copyright owner, and that original owner can take action against them if there's no reasonable consideration of fair use, which again, the popular opinion of transformative rarely matches the illegal definition of transformative and is rarely enough to qualify for fair use. But with that, the original copyright owners can actually grant permission or license to others to use that derivative work. But, barring the permission of the original copyright owner or the creator of the derivative work, such as what happened here, then Mr. Dalek JD's use of the derivative work and passing it off as his own material and effort is infringing on the copyright of Panaz. So, what can people like Panaz or Suggestive Gaming or those publications that Philip Mewson ripped off do? Well, as this is copyright infringement, use of the takedown provision of the DMCA would be open to them, as well as filing a lawsuit if they so desired. The thing is, with plagiarism that is infringing copyright, some additional care would need to be taken in writing the takedown request, such as you would need timestamps of your video along with links to your video or video in the request. You would also need to certify and prove that your content was published before the infringing content was, and you would also need to list timestamps of the infringing content. But there is also the difficulty that most creators who are harmed by these forms of plagiarism won't step up to the plate and do that, because likely what would happen is a counter notice would be filed and then it would have to go to court and many creators don't have the funds to be able to go through that process. And that's a real difficulty, because without such actions being taken, the plagiarism and theft that occurs will likely continue to happen and continue to flourish, being perpetuated by unethical creators that are looking for easy money or who lack the creativity for the role they find themselves in as a content creator. So there we have it. Plagiarism can be copyright infringement, and in these instances with Mr. Dalek JD and Philip Mewson, I do have a very firm belief that they are just that. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.